Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I have a really special interview with a very special person. Her name is Svetlana, and we are going to talk about dropshipping on Etsy. So for all of you newcomers, she has lots of experience, years and years of experience, and you're going to learn everything that there is to know about it with all kinds of golden nuggets that we always like to throw in inside. So for those of you who don't really know about it, Etsy is what we call the new kid on the block. Uh, it's a great marketplace to list your products and get lots of sales, lots of profit, lots of organic traffic to your store without having to spend so much money on marketing like we have in other platforms. So we're going to get down to the bits and bytes. I don't want to spoil anything. So Svetlana, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hello. Um, I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and letting me talk about this fascinating you know, platform that I love. Uh, my name is Svetlana Dubova, and um, I've been in e-commerce for eight years, I think. So, and Etsy is one of my favorite platforms, apart from Amazon. So, so for those of you who are completely new here, I'll, I'll just give it a quick background. The dropshipping business model, which is what we're going to talk about in this podcast, is simply a business model that allows you to host your own online store and sell products on your online store, which in this case is Etsy. And you don't have to hold any products in stock. You don't have to uh, purchase anything. You don't have any uh, huge upfront investments. It's a very low risk uh, and high reward business model to adopt. You just do have to know how to do it the right way. And so we're going to mix in the dropshipping business model with Etsy, and you're going to learn all about that in this interview, of course. So starting off with my first question, Svetlana, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your background and experience uh, in the dropshipping industry? In dropshipping, I, I think I am about six years. Uh, so as my first platform that I started selling on, uh, it's Amazon and mainly Amazon Europe. Uh, so, and the dropshipping just came into my line by, by accident. <laughs> So I I just I had a failure on Amazon one product and I had to sell it. So I I didn't know where where to to sell this product. So I opened a Shopify store and started drop shipping. So it's just kind of like by mistake, which is uh it's it's yeah. actually a very interesting reason because it's different from most people like me for example, just like you have been also drop shipping for over 6 years now. But for me, it didn't happen by mistake. It happened because I was really looking for another source of income, which is what most it's most people's reasons. So uh, I like the fact that for you, it was just kind of like it happened by mistake. You had a product that you got stuck with on Amazon, which is in inventory, right? You actually purchased the product. It wasn't drop shipping, And then you had to get uh, uh, rid of it, which... Uh, you did by starting to sell it and also drop shipping on Shopify. Yeah, but uh, actually, this this is like the the greatest experience I've ever had because from that I built a big baby brand, and um, so it it's just crashing. We're gonna get we're gonna get into it also into our uh, questions later on. But Svetlana has a huge, substantial uh, Russian following, so lots of uh, uh, Russian people who are following her. She's. Uh, uh, known as one of the best, uh, or maybe the best, uh, uh, a dropshipping mentor uh, in in uh, uh, in that area, and uh, you're gonna have a nice sneak peek because uh, she's looking to uh, teach more people, and not just uh, uh, the Russian audience, but uh, uh, the Americans and everyone else that we have. So, uh, so yeah, consider it. Uh, if you're listening to this, you're one of the first ones. You're one of the early birds. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, a little bit about your history. Like, when did you first uh, get started with actual dropshipping? Even though you kind of gave us a hint there, and what actually motivated you to pursue this business model once you actually learned about it? Well, that the product that I had to get rid of, uh, it was a diaper caddy, and uh, so we, uh, my daughter was helping me in that actually. So and she motivated me. Okay, so let's let's build a store, and uh, so I, I didn't want to buy any inventory, and I, I just looked into the model of drop shipping to create a bigger store to have more inventory, and you just with one click you add products products, any products you want. And uh, so we, we we created a big store and it started selling, you know, so it just, uh, it, it happened, you know, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it, it just because I'm doing blogging uh, and I'm using Pinterest for that. 
And everything, every product that I started uh, and, uh, launching in the store was particularly for Pinterest uh, and uh, and not like dropshippers sell. And if you buy a dropshippers course, so you, you they would offer you the products that are you know winning products uh, on AliExpress. Like so, no, no, no. I created something. Uh, different so because i wanted to create uh, you know the brand uh, and i was uh, getting nice beautiful products in the store uh, and at the end it worked <laughs> so it, it so, was my 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 main um, idea was to to create to create for women for pregnant women some experience to create their nursery and uh, to get into the you know developing uh, her baby and the rearing and bearing babies with uh, nice products clothes trending baby clothes and everything so that store <laughs> Uh, is a hit. So okay, so nice because for, for for most people who are just beginning with their journeys and they want to become an online seller, and you know they're also listening right now, and also the questions that that's going on in their heads is like, she's she's telling us like that she's created a store and it started selling, but in our case or in the cases that we've seen, people are creating stores and they have problems selling. So I want to dive in, and we are going to dive in exactly to how it became to be a success story for you and you know what you actually uh, went through to actually get to that it always exists it's always out there we just need to learn how to reach out and grab it and also learn from our uh, failures so let, let's get into all of that you found out about the dropshipping business model uh, we could say kind of like by accident and when you kind of dove into it and you went inside your uh, niche your baby niche uh, it actually turned out to to work uh, quite well for you but there are many selling platforms out there, right? There is uh, uh, Amazon, which you started off with, which in the beginning, from what I understood, was was a success. And then at some point, it just kind of turned into like, okay, I'm kind of getting stuck with this product. I need to like think outside the box and see what I can do with this. Uh, and we've got Amazon, we've got Shopify, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, uh, WooCommerce, Wix, many others that, uh, of course, I, I'm forgetting to mention, but with so many marketplaces out there, why was Etsy or why is Etsy your number one choice? As a FBA seller on Amazon, so I, I know all the things, you know, uh, and difficulties with selling products on Amazon. Uh, I'm really surprised when people tell me that they do drop shipping because Amazon is actually uh, quite um, strict about any order cancellations, delays. So you, you can just lose your account. So for me, Amazon, of course, is number one platform, but only for FBA products. So you, sh you should have products in stock. And uh, for today, it's my uh, main revenue. So where I get main revenue. Um, uh, but for dropshipping, uh, I love Shopify. I would tell you that uh, this is the only way to build the brand and brand today stands out and you can sell products much more expensive. Uh, but of course you need traffic. So you need to uh, either invest into advertising, uh, but advertising is very expensive and I don't advertise on Facebook at all. Uh, so either you have to learn organic techniques, like I use Pinterest, I do blogging and, uh, my main traffic comes from Pinterest. So, uh, my Shopify store. So the, it's just my experiment. So when I started it three years ago, I never advertised. Um, so I, and I have organic sales just going and going because I use Pinterest, um, but in terms of using a platform for dropshipping, I think Etsy is the best because here um, you you can build many stores, right? So th there is no um, uh, difficulty entering the, the platform. So you just have to, to have your ca credit card and that's it. So you open a store and you can open 10 or 12. So as many as you want. If, if you get banned, you can open a new one. So it, it's, it's actually, you know, because this is the uh, dropshipping is a bit the gray area. Um, right. and on Etsy, we have very lovely customers. So they are not Amazon customers who expect product the next day. Right. On Etsy, they can wait. Uh, so you can put like three, five working days, um, uh, shipping time. And uh, if 
you know, they have some special event, you can ask them if, if it's for the special event, then you boost, you know, the uh, shipping and you ask them to pay extra. So there is a very nice communication with buyers where you can easily ask for review and they get reviews. So, so you, you actually build your store from scratch with no inventory. Uh, with a very nice audience and you become a star seller <laughs> without any, you know, uh, serious investment into uh, hiding, you know, how to ask them about review what we're doing on Amazon. Uh, so for me, Etsy is the best and price. And one of the most important things uh, for me for Etsy dropshipping is the price. Uh, because here I sell like three prices more uh, than on uh, on Amazon, and and this is where you can get this money. You're selling them on on higher prices on Etsy, higher ticket right. for the same products that you're selling on Amazon. But I want to take it. I want to circle back to a few things that you said. So first of all, so for all of you listeners, I'm sure that you guys uh, I took in a, a a couple of quick tips that she uh, gave out here, which again we're going to dive into soon. But she talked a little bit about uh, Svetlana spoke a little bit about marketing tactics. Uh, we heard some clues about uh, using Pinterest for for organic traffic. And we're also going to uh, jump into that. Uh, but also to uh, as to it's not just Etsy, you're also selling on uh, Shopify. Uh, and as you mentioned, Shopify is a great platform for drop shipping. And, mm -hmm. and I also don't think they're going to go anywhere. Uh, but um, we also have to also factor in the learning curve, right? Because anyone who wants to start a business right now, and they're looking for the easiest way in, but not always the easiest way in, but also a way that will also work, something that you know will give us sales and profit because as we're looking for at the end of the day, Etsy is actually a pretty good choice here. And if I compare that with with uh, with eBay's golden days or their golden years, which, which was uh, about uh, four or five, six plus years ago. So anyone who jumped into eBay at that time, it was like kind of like a golden goose. So dropshippers were creating hundreds, if not thousands of accounts uh, every single day. And they just started, you know, going crazy, just dropshipping like and, and selling products from all kinds of different suppliers, not even caring where it's coming from and what's going on because easy, eBay just made it really, really easy for you back then. And uh, in time, they did start to kind of strengthen their belt because they were kind of like also in a huge competition with Amazon and they didn't want all of Amazon's products on their marketplace. And, you know, they didn't want to make it look like their Amazon. And uh, there was all kinds of reasons. I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, go through uh, go through it all. I'm, I'm not also an eBay insider, but what I'm trying to say here is that right now is a great time to join Etsy because, I mean, we can also see it uh, inside AutoDS, what's going on. You know, we see a lot of sellers who are also selling on Etsy and, uh, and the, you know, it looks really good. We're also selling on Etsy, of course. And, you know, we also have your uh, success uh, podcast right now where you're also talking about your methods. But yeah, Etsy is definitely on the rise. And I think that if there's any time, if there's any good time to join Etsy, it's definitely, definitely now. And I'm sure that we're also going to get into the point where a few years from now, dropshippers are going to be looking back and saying, why didn't, you know, we open that Etsy account a few years ago when it was like, so wow. Not that I'm saying that in a few years, it's not going to be. But if you guys are looking for good timing, now is definitely that good timing. That's a little bit about why you decided to join Etsy. It's easy to join on Shopify. It's a little bit harder. You have to learn about marketing. You have to learn how to create logos. You have to learn to be a graphic designer. You have to learn how to market your store, whether you're going to do it organically, whether you're going to do it through paid traffic through ads whatever it all takes experience it all takes learning and it also all takes a budget from your pocket and if you don't have that much of a budget etsy is again your go-to because it's relatively a new marketplace they're looking for sellers to join because you know of course that's how they're making their uh, profit at the end from the transaction fees and also from other places but that's usually the main one and uh and yeah they're welcoming sellers they're welcoming uh drop shippers like you said it's a gray area anyway i don't want to take all of this for myself uh but uh like you said it also gives you a lot of organic traffic which is great all you have to do is go to etsy create your account it's free start listing products each listing costs like 20 cents something like that right we'll get into it but uh that's pretty much all there is to it and the transaction fees list your product and we'll make sure that you'll get traffic as long as your product is interesting and people are searching for it. So that makes Etsy one of the best and one of the easiest selling channels we'll start with today. Let's dive in some more. And this one is a really, really hot topic. So when someone is creating a store right now, the first question that always pops into their minds is, 
what it, it's not what is the shipping times it's not uh what's my store's name or my store logo it's what product should i sell what's going to sell how can i find the products that will sell because if i'm not selling then everything else doesn't really matter so svetlana i i'm i spoke a lot can you tell us a little bit about how you're finding your winning products on etsy how you find them is there any specific strategies and tools that you rely on and uh yeah what factors do you consider also to make sure that these are the products that are going to sell for you well so i will start from one thing so how i discovered etsy dropshipping i think that would be interesting yes. uh because uh so as a dropshipper so i source products from anywhere and uh one of my suppliers that i found that was pretty uh good choice was on etsy a chinese supplier with uh, DHL shipping that was much cheaper than from AliExpress. Uh, and then I suddenly saw the products that I sell actually in my store and uh, they they say sell quite well with AliExpress photos on Etsy. And I said, wow, so let me try. <laughs> yeah, so, so <laughs> sorry for to interrupt you for a second. So you were looking for a supplier yeah, right, for your products. That I How, sell on what's Shopify. your process of looking for suppliers? How do you start looking for suppliers? Uh, no, it's it just because uh, on my Shopify stores, I sell um, expensive products. And uh, some of them, so when you search, when you know you need better deals, so you search on different platforms. And uh, Etsy is also a platform to source products because Chinese sell on Etsy a lot. And right. this is what I discovered. So uh, the products that are on AliExpress, they are on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And uh, with horrible pictures bad description no optimization nothing yes. they, they don't know how to sell so don't be afraid of them mm -hmm. and i just tested one store uh and i i just I was adding one product after another after another and in three months i generated 24k uh, pounds uh revenue just in three months it was skyrocketing oh. um uh, and uh, so, so this is how I, I got into it. Uh, but that store, I started from my experience in drop shipping in my niche. Uh, so you went through a niche that you already know, or other suppliers. Yes. You found Etsy yes. as a supplier. You opened up Etsy. You kind of uh, looked around there and noticed that this is actually a pretty good selling channel, or it's worth to check yes, as a selling been... channel rather than a supplier. And then you just created your account, started listing your products. How many products did you have to list in order to make? that revenue um i think 30 and 30 uh, products for about 24 25000 uh yes so unfortunately i lost that store and i will tell you <laughs> what not to do <laughs> so you should we generate really too much money that. on etsy yeah we want to get to that we, we're gonna get to that though yeah. don't give all of your secrets right at the right at the start so you're already going through a niche that was already working well for you are you yeah. still selling only that niche today or did you open up to yes. more products Yes. So, uh, so after that, I opened a few stores and I, um, spread like the, the things that I do, you know, in my niche into several stores. And, uh, now when I launch a store, so after that, I launched in new niches as well that I don't have Shopify stores. And my main source of, uh, products where I look for them, it's Instagram and Pinterest. Uh, uh, Pinterest and Etsy, they're like, uh, you know, twins. So, because everybody, you know, if, if you search for the, uh, search volume of Etsy products on Pinterest, so you will get like huge interest. So people love buying products from Etsy on Pinterest. Uh, and uh, you can easily catch the trend. Uh, you can understand what people use today, what what they uh, wear, what what they put in their home, how they celebrate birthday, how they celebrate wedding. So easily you trace all the ideas there. Um, and these products, they are not even on Amazon yet. So there are many products that, so you cannot, you know, like go from Amazon directly, see the best seller. Okay. Put it on Etsy. Uh, this is not my way of doing my, of creating my shops on Etsy. Uh, I am checking, of course, sales on Amazon. And I'm, I'm doing that as well, but here I, I see. So what, what is going to look good on Etsy? Uh, for me, the main, um, uh, feature of the product, it should be beautiful. It should be somehow looking like handmade because Etsy is a handmade platform and they can close your, 
winning products just like that uh, because this is not handmade but well it is not handmade handmade so you can check products what they sell they're manufactured um and uh, so first the, the first thing is the trend so search the trend uh search for these products if you want to start selling for example a blanket right so don't go just from your point of view okay i like white blankets this style so choose what just you have so many blankets in all interiors in instagram then you check on pinterest and uh then then you 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 just test it test it in your store and if you see the traction you you see likes you see followers on etsy because etsy is a unique uh, organization of uh, uh marketing itself so uh, if somebody likes your product they automatically follow up this uh buyer and they offer them all oh, this shop you know has a sale this you like this product and now it's on sale blah 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 so uh so this is the the thing of creating your um uh, environment for your store and uh, and you can easily just test a few products but but never choose a bad looking product with bad pictures uh the product which is not on instagram and you just have a picture from aliexpress no this this is not the way so uh, go deeper into the niche just spend your time search for influencers on instagram on pinterest and look how they present everything and this is also the like free photography you don't invest <laughs> into any photography there's some really good tips here that are different than a normal day-to-day -day for the average dropshipper who whether has experience or who's just learning from the average information that we have out there on the internet so i want to touch up a little bit on that so one of the first things that you mentioned here was that and it's very very true and i also say this a lot do not try to sell something that you simply have a hunch on or that you think is going to sell but you don't really have experience in the industry you don't have experience uh, uh researching this product in the market and you just think it's probably going to sell well because that's a, just what you think so stay away from that mindset and go see what the market is after or check that product to see if the market is interested in it how do you check if the market is interested on it well, there's the old traditional way of doing it. Like you said, you can just go to Amazon, check out their best sellers. But of course, that is what every other dropshipper is doing. And that is what every other dropshipper is selling. Doesn't mean that you can't sell it and make a profit. But in order to increase those chances and multiply them, even you can go to places like uh, Pinterest and Instagram and search for the main niche of what you want to sell. Maybe something that you have a passion for, maybe something that you like, but don't go into something very narrow down and specific like a certain type of T-shirt, but actually look at what fashion clothes are trending right now yeah, broadly on those social media platforms, because there you can easily pick up on what's trending right now, which is things that most other dropshippers are not looking at because they're off looking at the best uh, seller suppliers, uh, best seller section on their suppliers' websites. So that's uh, uh, one great takeaway that I would like to uh, uh, mention from what you just talked about. Uh, and also that um, product research is really, really important. And I don't think uh, anyone can ever undermine the importance of it and how it's important to also check the market, test the market and not stop doing it, because that's really the way that you're going to find the products at the end of the day that are really going to sell well for you. And in your case, you started with uh, something that you did. Uh, I, I believe you had a passion for the baby products, the baby store that you opened on Amazon. It's something that you uh, were probably passionate for yourself. And in time, you also noticed that uh, like you kind of got stuck with that product on FBA and you moved on to uh, to also the dropshipping business model to also expand and learn about more categories. And the last thing that I want to touch up on before the next question is, and it's also really, really important, what you can sell and what you cannot sell on Etsy. Now, this is important because it's not like on eBay where you can go and list almost, I wouldn't say everything, but almost everything that you want to sell, you can almost sell it on eBay, right? Except for the extreme cases like uh, firearms, tobacco, or registered copyrighted products, things like that. But on Etsy, it's narrowed down more to arts and crafts, uh, DIY projects, uh, party supplies, and just things that have to do around that vintage, and those are the main categories that you can sell on Etsy. Now, in many cases, you guys will notice that people are selling like other things on Etsy that are not that. Well, they're going to take the risk. And at some point sooner or later, their accounts are probably not going to be active anymore. 
but for us, th this is what Etsy uh, supports. And if we want to stay here for the long term, which I hope that you guys are, those are the products that you want to uh, sell on Etsy. So one of the uh, nicest strategies that I learned here is that we can also also use social media channels, searching for what we like and seeing what results are selling really well. Also, maybe uh, reach uh, seeing some influencers on social media, what they're shouting out on because they also know what's trending and getting those ideas and then looking for suppliers. Speaking of suppliers, that's going to bring me to my next question, because now that you kind of have like a clue of how to find the products that you might want to sell in your store. Your next step is to actually look for suppliers, good suppliers who can sell it to you at great conditions, fast shipping, great prices, high quality products, and all the important things to look out for. So Svetlana, when it comes to working with suppliers, could you tell us a little bit about the suppliers that you work with on your dropshipping stores? And uh, how do you actually find them in the first place? Well, first, I want to tell you that on Amazon, I sell only home improvement products. I don't sell baby products. Okay, my mistake. <laughs> because it's the, uh, well, for suppliers, um, I love selling from Amazon. So dropshipping from Amazon is amazing, especially for Etsy. They have uh, a lot of customization on Amazon. And uh, this is one of the things that you should definitely add to your store because once once you have customization, then that, that it means it's a handmade and it's a longer process. And uh, on Amazon, you have it in jewelry, in, in, any, in any field, uh, in any uh, category, you can find them. Uh, and of course, on, on Amazon, we have next day delivery. So if if you need uh, some, you know, for the date that they uh, expect, you know, a baby shower or a wedding, uh, then, then you have Amazon. Uh, in China, it's a more complicated process. Um, and here, my advice would be to open a test store uh, because uh, once we start working with supplier, uh, we need to, to figure out, you know, the shipping time, if he packages it well, or uh, if customer is happy with the, the uh, quality of the product, everything. So we, we need to be sure. Uh, so I always, I have like one store where I test products um, uh, before, you know, launching it into the store that I, I build uh, seriously. Um, and uh, for suppliers, it's important if they uh, communicate well, if they respond fast, uh, if, if they're open to any, you know, to put uh, a note for the buyer, you know, because on Etsy, it's important when, when they, they, they write a message as a gift. Um, and for me, because, um, my stores are all UK stores. And uh, it's hard for me just to close, you know, only for US market. I know it's the biggest one, but uh, since since my business is in the UK, so I have UK cards. So once you enter UK card, okay, so your store is UK. <laughs> uh, so for me, it's important that the supplier uh, ships to all, uh, you know, worldwide, yeah, to all uh, countries. Uh, and, um, th this is the thing that I like about that. So, uh, so they ship to US, right? So they ship to UK and to Europe. You know, that in Europe, there are many, uh, things that you, you regulations you have, uh, uh, Lucy, like if you sh sell to Germany, you have to register iOS, S, you know, many, many yes. things. So, and yes. here from China, they take everything on themselves. So you, you charge them VAT, everything on your store. And, you know, you, you get a big margin if you sell to Europe from, uh, China. Uh, so for me, th that's the biggest part. And many uh, AliExpress sellers, they have stores in, they have inventory in Poland. Um, I have never found anyone in the UK, but in Poland and US. So for me, this is like a strategic uh, position. So if, if I have sale in Germany or France, so it's three days delivery. Uh, of course, it takes time to build this relationship and uh, I have my Chinese agent, so it, it's hard to work in, in dropshipping if you don't have your own Chinese. Yes. Uh, so uh, we, we build it. So if, if I cannot find the good supply, so she just sources for, for me the product and she ships, uh, herself. Okay. So. In interesting. So, so there's, so the, there's actually a lot, a lot going on here. One, you're working a lot with Amazon as a supplier. 
I know many dropshippers who are uh, sometimes having trouble with them when they start to scale up their business and they get a lot of sales, then they notice uh, Amazon, like if you're using the same account and shipping to so many different uh, m- multiple warehouses at once, uh, sooner or later they lock that buyer accounts uh, because they don't like uh, really support the whole uh, dropshipping business model. But of course, there's so many ways for dropshippers to put up with this. Uh, for example, uh, I mean, I- I've been doing it for over uh, six years now. Um, I see that you're doing it. I know that many, many dropshippers are still doing it. So of course there are ways to overcome that. Uh, but before uh, before we even get into that, I like the fact that you were talking about when you are working with Amazon, you're actually going for the customizable products. So as you guys know, when you're searching products on Amazon, you notice that uh, uh, some of them are actually, some of the products are actually customizable, right? Like if you go to jewelry, you can embed something on the necklace or on the earring or on the bracelet or or, or whatever. You can do the same thing with uh, with clothes. So of course, the print on demand model uh, uh, can also uh, kind of, uh, can also work here on uh, Etsy. Uh, but the customizable products uh, are the ones that uh, you're looking for on Amazon because that's actually what's going to give you a customized a product on Etsy, which is what they're looking for. Uh, so that actually goes together, and that's really, really um, that's that's a really great idea. I also like how you have one store for actually checking products. So you have like a dropshipping store where the whole point of that store is just just to test, 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 test. And then you'll make some sales on the products that actually start to sell well. You move them to the winning product store. You can call it that. And then that store is the one that's booming in business, giving you uh, the sales. And then you're running your analytics and, and getting even more info on your winning products while continuing to research for products on the product research store. Let's just call it that. So I think that's really cool that you have that thing going on. Uh, and it's also a great idea if anyone wants to like not confuse one store, have products that you're testing and have products that you know that are proven winners. This is actually going to differentiate between those two so that, you know, you'll be more organized. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, and also the fact that uh, the advantage of working with, uh, there's of course advantages and disadvantages of, of pretty much everything, every decision that you make. But if you're going to work with a Chinese supplier, like from AliExpress, you can actually find them in warehouses that are actually close to you or close to your audiences, your your buyers, your shoppers, so that you can actually ship quickly to you. So not every product that we find on AliExpress is actually being sourced out from China. And uh, you can also find them in warehouses all over the world. There's even warehouses where, where I'm from in Israel. I've noticed I even bought one, I, I purchased a few products, some audio equipment for for, for this room right here. And uh, I didn't even notice after I checked out the product uh, arrived within uh, about five days. And I was like, that doesn't really make sense from China. I went into the order details and I realized that the seller doesn't live that far away from me, from AliExpress. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, so it's nice. And also the fact that they pretty much cover you when it comes to uh, a VAT and all the extra things that you need to pay. It's, it's already paid for from the Chinese supplier. So it will reach its destination easier than uh, places that were shipped out from uh, from Amazon, let's say, which uh, most times it's not included. Uh, so that's actually also a pretty cool uh, tip to hear. Um, do you have any uh, Do you have any solutions for like? Did you ever get your accounts locked when you were dropshipping too much from Amazon, and uh, what you had to do to uh, put up with it? Yeah, I had this problem uh, because I, I'm I'm also from Israel. Well, I only recently moved to Spain, and um, yeah, that, that it was suspicious, like shipping to many uh, dresses. So it, it was like a story I created, a story crying, you know, because products are not being shipped to Israel. Look how I'm locked. I asked my friends <laughs> mm. to ship for me. Yeah, I have, and I, I, they didn't ban it. Um, well, of, of course, it's a bit uh, gray. So that's why it's better to, uh, when you start with Amazon product, so find a Chinese supplier and to be safer, uh, just ship then orders from uh, China. It's easy because this is what what Amazon is absolutely Alibaba. So just a bit improved. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes more strict when it comes to dropshipping. Now, we're not saying that it's not possible and it's still being done all the time. I'm still doing it. I can see that you're still doing it. I think it's great. But we do have to learn to work around. If we still want to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we want to be uh we, we want to insist on working with amazon we don't want to hear about anything else then you're going to have to learn the workarounds there. and there are some of them you can create multiple accounts that are not linked to one another and you know just ship out different uh, orders 
not all from the same account in, uh, on the same day. Uh, you can use uh, automatic order services, which we also have in AutoTS. So it's being automated for you without using your buyer account. So you don't really have to worry about that. But of course, the I think that is one solution. And it's a great solution. The best solution is to work with multiple suppliers. Don't just work with one. So once you're mixing in Amazon and AliExpress, you're already, op or Alibaba, even better, you're already opening up yourself and you're not relying on one supplier. If they ever let you down, then your whole business is pretty much being let down and nobody really wants to put up with that. Yeah. Okay, let's jump on to the next one. We pretty much, um, may maybe we have a clue on this, but maybe not. What is your favorite niche to sell? Um, well, uh, so my education is interior design. So for me, of course, home decor is uh, very natural to start with. Uh, Which is what you did on Amazon. Uh, yeah, so that, that's why the, that was my first niche. And uh, in, in baby, also I sell in uh, baby nursery decor. So it's more about uh, decor. Mm -hmm. uh, but I recently discovered um, amazing, unique niches. Yeah, I'm not going to tell all of them, but <laughs> yeah, it's a whatever bit. you want. If there's any uh, anyone in particular yeah. that you like, you can, uh, or maybe but something for, that you liked in the past that you don't really like anymore. Or, or, yeah. So, but uh, for Etsy, you should look into wedding. Absolutely, wedding is a winner, and now it's going to be the season of wedding. Uh, home decor, of course. Uh, uh, jewelry, jewelry. You can start very easy, you know, the the store and jewelry. And uh, then buy your own inventory, very cheap, and start, you know, with your fulfillment. That if if you just have no idea, just start from jewelry. Yes. Uh, now for recording my new course, I I started the pet store, and oh. uh, I I think because I see the potential in that one, uh, and again with my unique strategy of <laughs> uh, picking the products. Right. So I'm not going like to sell a collar, you know. Yes, to, yes. Because that's, that's what it's all about. You can create another yeah. pet store. You can create another pet store and then it'll just be another pet store and that's fine. But it's the products, right? It's the products and also how you market products. them. But if you're if you're doing your special product research that you talked about, then of course you're going to get the more special products. You're going to get the more unique products that are trending now that other dropshippers probably still haven't found yet because they're not using that same method to find trending products that people are looking to sell now. Uh, and like you said, it's good to start uh, with uh, with maybe with a, a jewelry store because it's like all year long. Um, and so is pets. It's all year long. It's not seasonal. So you won't sell for three months and then not get any sales for the next three or six months. Uh, so it's a very good niche to start. Pet, jewelry are all great uh, niches. But of course, there are other dropshippers who opened it. So from here, it's all a matter of what is your marketing technique and what is your product research technique, which is what you are uh, talking about, which is what makes your case stand out more than most other dropshippers. But, but I want to add one thing. So uh, in order to start selling to the audience, you need to understand what exactly they, uh, they're looking for. So for me, it was a big discovery in my wedding store that, uh, well, me coming originally from Russia, uh, we would never use any artificial flowers anywhere. And <laughs> it's just for me, it was a revelation that they get married with the artificial mm. bridal bouquet. So in everything, so you should learn what they use and uh, and go for it. Yes, that's uh, audience research, I think. And what they're looking for is that that's the pinpoint of what you're trying to do when you're uh, researching for products and not just what they're looking for, but also the what it's made of, right? Right? Is it real? Is it artificial? I mean, it gets down to that and not just uh, in general, what is what what is the product they're looking for? Because if you're if you're not going to narrow it down, then you're going to be broad. And if you're going to be broad, then there's a little bit of less chances of it selling. So, of course, it's good to niche down and to narrow down on the products that you're selling, not just what, but also the type and the materials and, and uh, more things like that. And that's why the product research is really, really important. And um you don't want to keep this at a general or at a basic level. This is where you want to put most of the hours of your work on. And you can maybe uh, like later on think about how the store looks and, and you know, customize it more, decorate it more. But in the beginning, it's the products. And after that, um, everything pretty much starts to roll and you'll, you'll, you'll know what to work on next. But product research is always, always ongoing, at least in my case. And I'm pretty sure it's also in yours. Uh, my next question is uh, a little bit about profit margins. This is also another question that many new beginners are having problems, uh, you know, trouble with. So we found products, we found suppliers, 
We know that we need to sell these products on our stores and we just need to mark up the price because that is a dropshipping business model. We take the product from this supplier, we'll sell it in our store for a higher price so that when someone buys it, we can ship it from the supplier to the end customer and we'll just keep the profit between what we paid our supplier to what our buyer paid us. So when it comes to profit margins, I've, I see many dropshippers who are starting below the 10% uh, line. And uh, I just don't like really seeing that because I remember when I started off, it was pretty much the same. I, I, I wasn't even looking at percentages. I was just thinking, you know, even if I make 50 cents profit or, or $1 profit on an order, that's 50 cents or $1 more than I had before that order. So that's money. And I was just thinking like, as, as I just need to be cheap. That's what's important. The products, uh, we just need to be cheap. People will buy it. And I realized really quickly that that's not the way to do it. So I'd like to learn a little bit from you about your profit margins. What is your preferred profit margin? I know that there's many variables on the product and the marketing and the locations, but how do you work with profit margins today? I charge a lot. That's, that's my good. rule. That's good. That's that's <laughs> and, and, that's where I'm my, leading to. But yes, yeah. My advice on? to to everyone who starts on Etsy: don't cannibalize Etsy because you will ruin the platform. So mm -hmm. charge. Uh, you know, you you put you should put the highest price on your product because uh, before going to Etsy, everybody thinks you know that they buy a uh, special product uh, handmade and they are ready to pay more so never low down your price because some chinese seller is selling something similar with bad listing so it's obvious it's chinese so create your unique uh, environment your store uh, and uh, just put high price so for me it's minimum uh, 100% so I, nice. I don't go for Etsy less than 100% uh, from from the, uh, you know, the sourcing price. Because, um, you know, you, you have um, on Etsy, you have a lot of things that they will, will charge. And especially in the UK account, they will do the um, uh, conversion rate. So, so you have many things they will charge you. you. You will be surprised that you get much less money than you would expect to so it's better to charge more so when i see that okay my profit margin is getting lower i just put Raise mark the, the price. price higher and just for for the comparison so on amazon the product sells uh in the niche so this is like the average price is 50 dollars and on etsy i sell it for 150. Okay. so so this is the things uh and that, that i discovered and uh uh, I, I think uh, the minimum, if you want to start, is fifty percent. If right. minimum, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say these things. One, don't ruin the Etsy platform. It's, it's I think it's a really good takeaway for, uh, for here because that's exactly what happened on eBay. So I was I talked a few minutes ago about the golden uh, the golden days or the golden years of dropshipping on eBay. So many dropshipping gurus came out teaching about new courses on how to sell on eBay and. There were like in the beginning it was tens and quickly hundreds and quickly thousands of mentors who didn't really do it that much or th there's all kinds. Okay. There's all kinds. I'm not going to uh, say that they're all one, uh, one type, but there was a boom of mentors, which brought a boom of new dropshippers who don't really know what they're doing. And they just went with their own rules and they pretty much made eBay's platform. They made eBay's customers really mad because they didn't really know what they're doing in the first place. I just took some course. I know that it's, I'm making, I can make a lot of money from this. All I have to do is list these items and then I sell them. Then I need to sell it to the customer, but the items were quickly going out of stock and dropshippers didn't know what to do with it. The prices started changing and the dropshippers weren't uh, ready for it. And they were shipping out their items to uh, uh, not quickly enough, not on time, not according to their policies. Many returns, many can cancellation requests, many mad customers, many mad buyers at eBay. So eBay noticed that their product is the buyers, not what you're selling. What you're selling is your product, but eBay's product is the buyers. And if you're not going to take care of their product of the buyers, then you're not going to be here. You're not going to be a seller here. And many sellers pretty much uh, made it much more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but they made it much more difficult to start a dropshipping account today on eBay. Whereas on Etsy, it still hasn't happened, at least not yet. And that's why I want to emphasize what Svetlana is saying on take care of the platform. Don't ruin it. Don't start doing things without knowing what you're doing. Don't ship out. Don't uh, use. Don't use anything in your policy in your shipping policies. Don't set anything unless you know for sure how fast you can ship out the product. 
even give it more days in the beginning and once you notice that you, your supplier really ships it quicker then maybe you can kind of change down your you know bring down your shipping uh, uh times for example but don't ruin it don't underprice it don't try to cut all of the prices because you're not going to reinvent the wheel here you're just going to damage yourself and other sellers that are around you so uh, we don't want that to happen we want to take care of etsy we don't want the same thing on etsy to happen that we saw uh, we don't want the same thing happening on etsy you know the things that we saw happening on ebay and so those are some really uh nice tips there and now a question that doesn't have to do with all of the good stuff let's talk a little bit about difficulties so can you talk to me a little bit about share some of the challenges or difficulties that you faced along the way while building your uh, job streaming business on uh, on etsy so what challenges you had and how you were a actually able to uh, overcome those challenges? Uh, well, in, in the beginning, um, I was very careful with packaging. So I didn't want customers to know that, you know, this is actually coming from uh, Amazon. So I had the person who was repackaging, you know, receiving from Amazon, repackaging and uh, in normal parcel sending to the customer. I still have the margin, so it wouldn't uh, like lower my margins. Um, but then I realized so that uh, many Amazon uh, sellers they already sent to Amazon. You know, not not there is no logo, nothing. So I I I ship now directly from Amazon. I have some buyers who even might you know post the picture. It was delivered from Amazon, uh, but it doesn't stop my sales. So I I I just saw okay. So you you didn't like that I ship it from Amazon. Then the the others wouldn't even look at this review. Right. Um, and you can always create behind the story that okay, this is our store on Amazon. We sell on Amazon this price on Etsy. Yes. We sell this price. That's so you true. you can always you know figure out your way. Um, and this is not Amazon where you immediately get banned. Um, and um, uh, one challenge that I see now uh, is just if you start generating a lot of revenue, they put reserve on your account for some time. For beginners, so for beginner seller accounts mostly. Uh, no, not only for the bigger so ones. Even, so even it's different the than ones. eBay. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's the uh, like periodically. So you have like so. So it's better to have like a normal amount of sales without any high peaks, in order to get your money fast. Because Etsy is good to to get money the next day. So it's not like Amazon. It keeps the money for two weeks, and and here you just get money next day. Uh, so here, yeah, this challenge uh, now exists. So that's why I have several stores, and uh, so so in order not not to show Etsy that there is such you know lot, lots of lots of sales in one store. And anyway, you have uh, find your way out, uh, giving uh, good tracking numbers. And uh, well, I, I don't give Chinese tracking numbers, so yes. because you know you can wait until the product reaches the country for example in the uk uh and the tracking number changes to every so you put the every local tracking number <laughs> and that's it they have a good tracking number after a couple of weeks etsy sees that you have really good tracking numbers and they release the reserve so it's just uh, there are ways to come out of it but yeah but it's, it's that's actually very interesting <laughs> and i, I want to circle back to a few of those things because uh like some things i'm hearing for the first time and i and that's that's why I really love uh, uh, these episodes, because even if you're an advanced or expert dropshipper, not just a beginner, you can still have a lot of uh, golden nuggets that you're going to learn here. So first of all, one, I want to circle back to Etsy selling fees, because it was one of the things that we talked about uh, before, uh, about profit margins and knowing exactly what your profit margins are. So guys, it's important to know what your selling fees are. Knowing what you're selling in, in Etsy, I don't remember the exact number. It's around 10, maybe 12%, uh, uh, something like that, or maybe even less. Um, but uh and so what so yeah so they usually take it from also from from your transaction so after you make a sale they're going to take a certain percentage a percentage of that and that's actually your your break even because after that break even you're actually making your profit so there's the transaction fees which you can learn about uh just search for SE selling fees on google and also there's the listing fee so as soon as you list a product you can even list a thousand products on day one which is something that i really like on etsy they're not limiting you they're not saying hey if you're a new seller you can only list 10 products for example that's what ebay is doing right here you can list as many as you want the only thing is and you're not going to pay a monthly subscription unless you got, got that etsy plus program but you really don't need it to be successful 
is how many uh is for every listing you're going to pay around 20 cents fee so take that into consideration don't list a thousand products on day one that you haven't researched and you you don't know if they're trending yet don't list them because you're going to pay 20 cents for each listing so five bad listings is one dollar it's not a lot of money but if you're going to put a thousand listings and you haven't researched them well it's you're probably going to be wasting the better a portion of uh, of that money. So make sure that your product research is on point, learn Etsy selling fees, whether it's when you're listing or after you make the sale. The second thing is Amazon packaging or supplier packaging. This is an uh, this is a question that many, many, many beginners uh, ask. And I was one of the beginners who used to ask that question before I got started, because I was also wondering myself, I mean, if I'm going to order a product and I'm going to get it in Amazon packaging, is the, isn't that going to be weird? Because I knew that I ordered it like on eBay or Etsy. So why am I getting an Amazon package? But you answered it pretty well. And any dropshipper with experience knows today that this is the answer to that question. 99%, I would say, of the customers simply do not care. Uh, out of my uh, tens of thousands of, of uh, transactions, and I'm not exaggerating here, I can count how many customers actually message me about it. And even when they do, you can easily come up with uh, some cover story like uh, you explained. It. It's exactly what I've been doing throughout the years. And really, it's no issue. And it's not a question that you're going to keep asking after you actually start dropshipping and making sales. Uh, scaling slowly uh, and payment holds is also a really important thing. So you want to take in, to take that into account in the beginning before you start getting your payouts. You may have to, you will have to pay for your first uh, several orders until you start to get that money flow coming into your bank account from your sales, which you can use to uh, purchase the products. And slowly, the money that comes into the bank will be the profits and not just to pay for uh, the next product because of the payment holds. So scale slowly and even open up multiple stores in order to show Etsy that you're not raising, you're, you're not increasing by 100%, but you have three stores. So average up between them is like 33% growth, for example. So you want to kind of balance it out between your stores. And the China tracking trick is actually pretty cool. So you're, you can ship out the product from your Chinese seller who can supply a tracking number within the time of your shipping policy. And by the time it reaches uh, UK or wherever you're shipping to, you're going to get a localized tracking number, which that tracking is what you're going to use on Etsy so that Etsy can actually see that you're selling from uh, selling uh, domestically, which uh, they will like to see a lot more. So that's actually a really cool trick um, uh, to learn yeah. about. And so, I also uh, charge for shipping. I always charge for shipping from UK. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can charge for shipping even if you're not paying for shipping. And uh, I know uh, that's, uh, well, I'm also doing it, but you can also add, uh, for example, expedited shipping at, with like for like another four or five dollars, even though you're going to use the same shipping service and it's going to arrive at the same time, just because you want to make that, you know, you want that chance to make the extra few dollars. And you know, it's completely up to us. We're the sellers and, you know, we, we, we can choose what we want to do with it. And I think it's completely fine. At the end of the day, the customers are buying something that they want to buy. They're paying the price that they agreed to pay and they get the product that they, uh, that they expected to get. So that's also one of the reasons why they really won't care about the packaging. They just want to make sure that they're getting the same product that they uh, requested that they bought from your website. Uh, and uh, one thing that we didn't talk about is the bad product descriptions and the bad titles that we're getting, because you mentioned it, that the, the Chinese sellers are just not making great product pages. So we can easily optimize this. I don't know if you're using AI today, but ever since like ChatGPT came out, I've been using it on all of my titles, all of my descriptions. So I just take an AI tool and I take the bad titles and descriptions from my suppliers' websites. I go to the AI tool. I tell them, hey, rewrite this product description for my e-commerce store, use bullet points, make sure that all the important information is there, like the product specifications and the materials and the dimensions and all of that. And it's just going to rewrite your product page and make it so professional when we compare it to the Chinese sellers. So are you using a little bit of uh, AI today in your stores or not yet? Yes, yes, of course. Chat GPT, you know, for description, it's amazing. Uh, but first, you should uh, carefully check for the keywords, especially yes. for, you know, so it should be for this platform, right? So you give it the keywords, the and then, then yeah, so Chat GPT is great, of course. Yes, it's definitely great. And I highly recommend anyone to use it. And you notice I didn't ask you if you're using it, yes or no. I asked you yes or not yet, because sooner or later, I think everybody is going to use <laughs> artificial intelligence. And if not, you're you're just kind of uh, behind. Uh, can you talk to us? And you you really don't have to, but it's really how you feel about it, uh, about your, we call it estimated uh, monthly revenue, just to get people to understand like 
numbers what we're talking about here? Well, I, I tried uh, to calculate it. Um, and uh, so what I see, like the winning store, it, it generates um, uh, annual annual uh, revenue. It's 100K pounds. So this is the one, one of the biggest. It, it's hard to talk about the monthly because uh, we have like seasons, yeah, yes. ups and downs. Yes. So for Christmas, of course, you have a uh, very... Uh, you know, big spike. Uh, spike. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it depends because in, in one store, like you have less in one more. And uh, so it's, I don't know, it's estimating it would be hard to speak about it now in, in summer. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, from I, September, yeah. from <laughs> September, uh, you, you will get different numbers. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, higher numbers. It, but it's still, first of all, it's uh, like I'm not, uh, I think the numbers are great, right? And especially when you're talking about around the 100% profit margin. So I was expecting the private mar the profit margin answer to be around what I'm selling today because, you know, I'm, I'm, I am my best, my best experience. And for me, it's around 50, 60%. And usually I hear dropshippers 20%. 30%, maybe 15%. And I'm tired of hearing these numbers, right? And when you're talking to me about 100%, I'm just happy to hear that, you know, I'm not the only one who's not afraid to profit. And uh, I see it every now and then. I don't see it as much as I wish, because I wish dropshippers would be a, be a little bit more convinced that you can mark up your products even more and make more profit. If you haven't tried, then how will you ever know? Right. But uh, it exists. It's out there and dropshippers are making lots of profits. We're not talking about 20, 15 percent. Those are not the profit margins that we're looking for, especially if we really want to feel that profit in our bank accounts. That's another thing that I wanted to point out. So for me, uh, I don't look at revenue. I look at profit. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's important. Uh, so if I see, OK, this store brings me 2000 K per month profit. Right. So this store is working well. Uh, so there is a store that brings 5 K month profit. So so you feel the money and then you invest into anything you want so for me drop shipping is just to skyrocket the amazon business to invest into fba so it's uh so you so can play around with it in so many ways yeah you can just play around with it in so many ways it's amazing i really think it's amazing just like in your case how you turn selling channels into suppliers and suppliers into selling yeah. channels and i think it's just amazing very flexible and uh, it just shows you some of the potential that you have here there's more than way way more than just one way of doing things here Okay, so let's talk a little bit about things that people don't really want to talk about all the time, but I still think that it's important because it's a part of the business. So uh, Svetlana, can you walk me around a little bit how you handle returns and customer service? It's a part of the business, right? Every now and then, in my case, it's around 2 3% returns. Sometimes I get a little, a little bit lower than that. So it's not the biggest part of our business, but when it happens, we have to learn to deal with it. Otherwise, we're not going to have a business. So how do you do How do you do around with uh, handling returns and customer service on Etsy? Well, here you should uh, place the customer in the first place. Yeah, if if you want to build a good store because they will leave you good feedback. So I I I figure out you know so how I can replace the product first of all, uh, not not to accept you know the returns. We don't need returns anyway. So if our product is bad, so there is no point to return it. Uh, so if if you know the customer is so angry, just it would be easy just to refund and forget about it. Not you know uh, you know not to have uh, these cases about your store. Because you you will get the money back with the next order easily, uh, but but this is the way to learn about the supplier because yeah this is what I had like they they didn't package the properly the uh, baptism dress for the baby and this is how I discovered and I had like horrible <laughs> messages so I, I apologized I refunded and that's it and uh, sometimes I will even send something for free as a present from Amazon <laughs> just to satisfy the buyer. Uh, because Etsy, this is the family like platform. You you should build your community like, and uh, every store that that's my recommendation to build it in in niche. Like so, if if some people are interested, uh, you know, in in baby nursery decor, so they will follow you. They will look at your new products, and if you are nice to them with the first order, they come back and buy and buy so that's why if even if i have a you know angry customer so i try to turn it into positive experience <laughs> and, and I, I, yeah. I don't get like return like um you know so i don't need this product anyway what is so. what is your what is your return rate around in percentages do you have that figure 
Mm, I haven't looked at that. Well, in any case, I I really agree yeah, with the things that you say, and it's things that I always always like go over over and over again because uh, one, it's it's also the same uh, that goes for me. I really really it's important to take care of the customers for the long run of your business, and I think that that's one of the reason that we have our businesses running for so long now. I think this is one of the main factors besides knowing what to sell. It's also how to take care of our customers and dealing with those returns when we have them. It's the lower percentage. I, like I said, it's not the main part of your business. It's not what you're going to be doing all day what you're going to be doing all day is product research and adding more training products to your store and the rest is the rest right but uh but you're not going to be dealing with it that much but when you do have to deal with it do it like the way that you would want to be treated as a customer yeah sometimes and i take this a lot into you'll, you'll learn a lot about the products and your suppliers from your customers feedback so when a customer sends you a negative message don't see it as a ah he doesn't know what he's talking about i know what i'm selling no you have to listen to your customer and realize if you have a problem with the product with the quality of it with the shipping quality with the supplier itself you're going to learn about it through that so sometimes your worst customer can actually turn out to be your best teacher for your business okay so you want to take that into consider into consideration and always take care of your customers if you're here for the long run uh so svetana thank you for also clearing that up for us um yeah uh, uh, yeah, I want to leave room for this question. We this uh, podcast went on long enough, but I still want to leave room for this question. Do you have any like funny or amazing encounters, something that really made you like, you know, kind of laugh? Because I mean, it's not the point of the business, but it's nice every now and then to get a smile on our faces from it too. So, any funny or or amazing encounters that you had while dropshipping uh, uh, on Etsy or other platforms? I think it's it's all about suppliers that I have from my experience. Um, so I I I started selling. Uh, very expensive posters uh, on Shopify store uh, and the markup. So, so if I source them for ten dollars, I sell them for one hundred. So you can imagine. So what they expect, and uh, I see returns, refunds. So they they just stripe these puts, and I say, what's going on? So I'm just losing money mm -hmm. and uh one of the customers they, they sent me the picture that the poster was folded you know like <laughs> folded not, not in a roll you know <laughs> um yeah. and, uh, at that time i had a sourcing agent from hyper school and uh, he said i said what what are you doing with my product so <laughs> actually so send me the video and he made the video it was the funniest video i have ever seen how he was showing how he's folding my expensive post. <laughs> wow. And that those are posters that you're marking up 10 times the price and they're just folding it up like that, saying it to customers. Customers are receiving it. I'm sh obviously, we know the reasons that they were doing it, right? Because they were trying to uh, to pay less for the shipping, right? For the packaging and, and the shipping. But at the end of the day, the customers are getting products that, uh, that are supposed to be high ticket posters that are just folded <laughs> up and that just look like... I don't even want to say the word, but uh, so what did you do with those customers? I mean, did you just have to deal with the loss? Well, I had to. I, I lost all Stripe disputes, of course, and um, so I just changed the supplier. So the I... supplier, maybe change the product or the supplier. But yeah, yeah, that is how we learn. That's how we learn. And sometimes it's going to cost us money to learn. Uh, sometimes we're going to learn from other people's mistakes, which is the optimal way to learn. But sometimes we're going to learn from our own mistakes, which is also a part of the process. And it's fine. Right. Yeah. What happened if you were to say at that point, you know what? I just lost a lot of money. I don't think this business is good for me. I'm just going to go find, uh, I don't know, an office job or something and do something that will give me money for, that will bring me money for sure. And, you know, because we don't give up on our failures and we continue trying to grind, we continue trying to find that success point. Like I said, it's always out there. We just have to learn how to reach out and grab it. And it's not just, you know, I'm not, it's not just like, uh, uh, a, a kitschy sentence or something like that. It, it's actually true. And I, uh, I see it just playing out all the time. So it's amazing. So Svetlana, I would like to uh, summarize this and sum it up because the podcast went long enough. I think that we had a lot to learn here for, like I said, beginners, advanced, intermediate, even expert dropshippers. If you guys ever thought about Etsy, I'm sure that now you have a much, uh, at least now you have much more reasons to learn why uh, you should uh, want to consider also selling on that platform. Like we said, take care of that platform. We don't want to see it getting ruined now because lots yeah. of dropshippers are hearing about it. Now they're making mistakes because they don't actually know what to do. So Svetlana, is there anywhere where our viewers and listeners on, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel or wherever you're hearing or seeing this podcast, if they want to learn more about you, 
and, uh, and about uh, and about your teachings. Is there anywhere where they can do that? Well, I started my YouTube channel. It's Svetlana Dubova, and I have my Instagram, Svetlana Dubova blog that um, I'm going to develop in English. So yeah, it's been long enough that I was in my comfort zone <laughs> with my native language. <laughs> So uh, like, so, yes. Yeah, so like I said earlier in this video, you're you've got that you've got the Russian following, and I'm sure that they've learned a lot from you. But it's time to open up, spread your wings to the bigger markets, to, and and to let more people to give more people the opportunity to actually learn from you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be leaving uh, the links to that below this video but this the the if you guys want to see the links you'll have to go to our youtube channel if you're listening on on apple Podcasts or spotify or anywhere else that you're hearing your podcasts go to our youtube channel at youtube.com slash auto ds and under this video under this podcast go to our podcast playlist you'll find this one under the video i'm going to leave the links uh to our course and uh and uh, uh instagram where you guys will be able to learn it, learn it in english of course uh, um once it's ready of course uh, svetlana and so if you guys want to learn more about dropshipping on Etsy, if you guys want to be one of the first ones to learn about the amazing strategies that I've learned so far from this really quick uh, podcast with uh, Svetlana, I'm sure that if we narrow it down, if we break it down uh, to bits and bytes, there's only so much golden nuggets that we can learn from here. So uh, Svetlana, I would like to say thank you very much for joining us today. And maybe you know we'll have you soon uh, here again on our channel with more stories more selling channels, more suppliers. You've been doing this for years and it doesn't look like you're going to go anywhere. So thank mm -hmm. you again, Svetlana, for joining us. I was really happy to he have you here. Thank you. And I want to thank uh, AutoDS platform because it, it actually helps us to build a uh, winning Etsy store in one day. So, and that, that will be my course that I'm going to do, <laughs> how to build a, a successful dropshipping store in one day on Etsy. Because when we combine it with, also with automation, we're really, automation. really going to be able to scale it. So yeah. if you guys want to learn about that, the links, of course, are going to be below this podcast episode. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now, Svetlana. Bye. -bye. Bye.